Uh, kumusta po kayo? I'm Rafi Alunan and uh, I'd like to talk to you about my involvement in the peace process during the time of uh, President Fidel V. Ramos. As you know, I held many hats as Secretary of Interior and Local Government. Concurrently, the Chairman of the National Police Commission, which had uh, operational and administrative control over the Philippine National Police. That's what gave me my direct line uh, to the President as Commander-in-Chief of that particular uniformed force. I was also the Chairman of the National Peace and Order Council. And the composition of the Peace and Order Councils included the different agencies of government on the one hand and uh, civil society on the other hand. Uh, there was broad participation uh, of citizens in these councils uh, and interacted with uh, a broad range of institutions who were involved in uh, peace and order. Uh, at the same time, uh, transparency was uh, practiced because everything that was said was recorded and shared. I was also concurrently the chairman of the Anti-Terror Council, known then as the National uh, Action Committee on Anti-Hijacking and Terrorism, uh, or NACAT. Because of these hats that got me involved in the peace process uh, early on in the administration of President Ramos. Our strategy was to bring about a, a various peace agreements or peace settlements with uh, the rightist rebels, uh, the extreme left, and the secessionist movements. The first uh, group that uh, came to a settlement with the government uh, was the right, the military rebels. And then we focused on the uh, secessionist movement. As you know, the MLF at that time represented uh, all of the secessionist uh, groups in the country because they were the sole body that was recognized internationally by the Organization of Islamic Countries, or OIC. We also offered the uh, olive branch to the left. I got to talk to people who were incarcerated uh, and were guests of ours in Camp Crame and in Fort Bonifacio. And I went all the way to the Cordilleras to meet with uh, Father Conrad Conrado Balweg of the CPLA. I delivered the same message, uh, which we crafted with President Ramos. And the message from President Ramos that I delivered was, we are all Filipinos. Precious Filipino blood has been spilled all, all these years. We need to work together to build a nation for our children. So get out of the underground. Join the political mainstream if you wish. And let's work together for a common future. Let's win the future for our children. And it's important that what we applied in the past that worked must be used or at least considered as a template for the current negotiations. Peace is a very important element that cannot be mishandled. It has to be handled with care. It has to be handled with the national interest in mind. It must be handled with the common good in mind. It cannot be subjective. It cannot be driven by personal interests or hidden agendas because that is doomed to fail. Well, I'm against the uh, BBL for various reasons. First of all, when we were talking peace with the MLF, we were also making overtures to the uh, MILF. As a matter of fact, there was a time when I was waiting at the foothills of Camp Abu Bakar to be able to talk to uh, Chairman uh, Haj Murad, who was the head of the military forces of uh, the MILF then, and Chairman Hashim Salamat. But because of uh, extremely very bad weather, the roads were washed out, I was unable to go up Camp Abu Bakar to discuss peace terms. So I eventually uh, ended up just talking to elements of their executive committee. And the message to me was very simple. Uh, if the MILF signs, we will sign. I did not believe them because our intelligence report showed that they were sending Mujahideen for training in Pakistan and in Afghanistan. As a matter of fact, uh, Jama'a Islamiyah 
which is the extension of Al-Qaeda in Southeast Asia, was known to have a number of trainees in Abu Bakr uh, coming from Indonesia, Malaysia, and the Philippines. Then there was uh, the ill-fated Operation Bujinka, led by Pakistanis. Eventually, we got to know the identities of these Pakistanis. Um, the mastermind of the operation was uh, Sheikh Muhammad, team leader that uh, was in Manila to assassinate President Clinton, President Ramos, Pope John Paul II, and then plant bombs in 11 U.S. commercial jets flying to the U.S. to be blown up in mid-air was Pakistani. As a matter of fact, this person, Ramsey Youssef, was also the bomber and, and therefore a wanted fugitive by the United States FBI for having bombed the World Trade Center in 1993. Uh, fortunately, the World Trade Center did not collapse as it did in 911. After that uh, incident, I was dispatched by President Ramos to talk to Prime Minister Benazir Bhutto so that we could have closer relations and security cooperation. In that face-to-face -face meeting that I had with Prime Minister Bhutto, she confirmed that Osama bin Laden and Chairman Salamat were in direct contact. So that confirmation led me to conclude that the MILF, despite its assurances to us that it would sign the peace agreement if the MLF signs it, was not going to sign. And I told this to President Ramos. To his credit, he said, I'm going to hold out till the last minute, hoping that they would come to the peace table. I will bend backwards and continue to offer the olive branch to the MILF so that we could have a, a more complete uh, agreement covering the main secessionist groups. Eventually, they didn't sign, but the OIC uh, and the Philippine government was quite happy because we had buy-in from the Muslim community in ARMM, from the clans, from the sultanates, from the local government officials, and from the various communities. But in the end, we prevailed. Now contrast that to the feeling today in Mindanao, both within ARMM and outside of ARMM, where both Muslims and non-Muslims are saying that how can we support a peace agreement where we have not been consulted, where there is no inclusivity and transparency. It's the same thing that happened during the time of Gloria Arroyo, when the proposal then was termed MOA AD. Today it's called BBL. But the methods used then, the modus operandi, which led to the Supreme Court's junking the MOA AD, is the same as the modus operandi being used now. No inclusivity, no transparency, which means a hidden agenda is there somewhere. This furtive approach is providing a lot of insecurity to the people of Mindanao. And they are saying that contrary to what government and the MINF is saying that BBL will bring about peace, they're saying it will bring war. Because no less than the MILF is saying that if they don't get what they want, if they get a BBL that's watered down, they will go to war. On the other hand, if the BBL is passed, those who were not consulted, those who were left out, those who feel that the agreement is a sellout of our sovereignty and our territory to include Saba, there will also be war. There will be war because the peace process was mishandled from the very beginning. All this after 44 of our law enforcers were murdered by the MILF, who on paper are supposed to be our peace partners. So, I have come to the conclusion, just as I did during the time of President Ramos, that the MILF cannot be trusted. Therefore, no 
to BBL.